You know, it's moments like this that I really like to just take a step backwards in time and reflect about everything that's happened in the last over a year and a half since I began this channel. All of the different topics that I've studied and produced content about, I, I really feel like I've done something significant for the world. Oh, okay, maybe I haven't. Maybe what I've really done is insult the hell out of just about everybody in the space flight industry. And in case you don't believe me, well, I've got a little compilation that includes just about everybody. Popular scientists, all the usual ones like Boeing and Blue Origin and Army Surplus Store. Army Surplus Store? Okay, so what was this technique my therapist recommended? Watch things that I like, listen to music that I like, while reading things that I really hate. Okay, let's, let's try this out. Um, Death on Mars from Scientific American. The Martian radiation environment is a problem for human explorers that cannot be overstated. Space radiation will damage Mars astronauts' brains. Radiation makes human missions to Mars too dangerous, and that's from the ESA. Elon Musk's plan for sending people to Mars is probably a suicide mission. Okay, okay, this isn't working. Screw this. I'm going to try reading something from a guy I like. Yeah, yeah, this guy, Bill Nye, he's the CEO of the Planetary Society. I gotta like what he's got to say. Okay, let's try again. Okay, this is from an interview with USA Today. Nobody's gonna go settle on Mars to raise a family and have generations of Martians. It's not reasonable because it's so cold, and there's hardly any water? What? There's absolutely no food, and the big thing, I just remind these guys, there's nothing to breathe. When you leave your dome, you're going to put on another dome, and I think that'll go, oh, okay, okay, the fact that he said there's no water, at least he didn't say anything about the damn radiation, but, but, but screw you, Bill Nye. Okay, this isn't working. Uh, I've got to find somebody that I like and respect that, that I'm going to let. Hey, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, this guy, this guy, Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's funny. He's educated. He's well-respected. Yeah, he's got to work for me. Okay. Oh, no, this article is paraphrased. I have a bad feeling about this. It's not that humans would find Mars an unappealing home. According to Tyson, humans can't colonize Mars. The red planet has a notoriously thin atmosphere, okay, and no global magnetic field, yeah. As a result, deadly cosmic rays and UV radiation shower the Martian surface, transforming the soil into a toxic... Okay, 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 to hell with this. I'm sick of all this talk about radiation. Yeah, Mars has radiation, but is it really that bad? Is it really that deadly? The way they talk about it, you think we are about to glow in the dark the moment we step foot on the planet. Is it really that serious? The answer is no. And all these people are extremely well-educated and famous morons. Oh, look at those engines. And all of that theoretical thrust. And just about ready. 
And off it goes on its simulated flight. Remarkable. Spectacular. And absolutely certain to sabotage the entire Artemis project. This is the SLS, or the Space Launch System. Or more appropriately called, the piece of shit overpriced Space Launch System. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the ultimate version of our 40K celebration, the climactic moment where we will destroy, I mean launch, the Boeing mug. And as you can see, I've made some modifications with the guidance of the Boeing Corporation. I've added strap-on boosters, which is something that they like to make use of, and SpaceX has foolishly avoided for so long because they're not reusable. But who needs reusable, right? Anyway, we've attached these things with duct tape in the interest of saving taxpayer, taxpayer dollars because, as we say at the Boeing Corporation, a man ain't a man without duct tape or a woman for that matter. Anyway, um, so there we are, the finished product. Oh, oh yes, and we are also going to be using some solid rocket fuel. Doesn't get any more solid than that. So um, I hope that you folks enjoy this. You've been waiting a long time for it. Thank you for 40,000 subscribers. And let's get this damn show on the road. Well, folks, to my great shock, this uh, mug actually managed to briefly overcome Earth's gravity and become airborne. But as you can see, its structural integrity did not hold up very well under the force of the solid fuel. Now, I have been tempted to leave the mug as it is since I actually managed to get it airborne. However, I have made a commitment to you folks, so we're going to have one more go. Ladies and gentlemen, the match of the century. Who is ripping off the American taxpayers more? In the blue corner, weighing in at 2.4 million pounds of thrust, they put a man on the moon, they sent countless rovers to the surface of Mars, they sent probes beyond the reach of the solar system, get it up for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Of course, I've got uh, Boeing in the corner here because they are also known as Boeing's bitch. This flight will cost taxpayers $90 million compared to a Russian Soyuz flight at $85 million and a SpaceX Dragon flight at $55 million. Remember, taxpayers still pay for it all because Boeing's only customer is... Say what? $90 million. $90 million a seat as opposed to 85 million from the Russians. To make the matter even worse, something the news report didn't mention, the Starliner carries seven astronauts. So it's actually $35 million different. Now, of course, the Soyuz can't carry seven astronauts, so, it's not exactly a fair comparison, but you see where I'm coming from. Five million dollars extra per astronaut via an American-made transportation method. How is this acceptable? To make it matters even worse, as if they could get worse, SpaceX, the competitor, 
is doing this for $55 million a seat. That's a, uh, uh, let's see here. Subtract 30, carry the one. Uh, yeah, $35 million less per seat. Congratulations to the Boeing Starliner's miserable failure, I mean completely successful mission. It was an absolute bullseye, better than I think anybody anticipated, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine said. That's good for the agency, it's good for Boeing, and that's good for the United States of America. <sighs>
And certainly I'm not going to blow up children's toys, right? Yes, I am. I am going to blow up children's toys with an incendiary warhead and a healthy dose of napalm. Wish me luck. For those in the monster truck business, this is for you, assholes. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Oh, very nice indeed. Watch it burn. Watch it burn. I guess it's about time to put it out, though. What? What'd you say? Water doesn't work on napalm? Holy shit. Ah, son of a bitch. <sighs> oh, for God's sake. that they move as quickly as they can. Oh boy, I can't believe it. We're going to orbit. We're going to orbit in the, in the summer or, or, or maybe the fall. Yeah, or sometime this year. Yeah, sometime this year. I, that's what I told them all and it's gonna happen. We're gonna make it happen. I'm tired of all this waiting. We're definitely gonna... Elon? What did you go and tell those people? Oh shit, I mean, um, hi, hi Gwen. Um, uh, uh, um, nothing. Oh good, because I heard that in the next seven months, you're gonna finish the Super Heavy, something that we haven't even done a hop with, by the way. Cram 24, 28 engines or whatever the hell onto it, put the Starship on top of it, and then load it up with 3,000 tons worth of fuel and hit the switch. Is that what you said, Elon? Hey, Gwyn, how'd you put those glasses on so quick? Um, no way did I say that. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, I, I did say that. Um, a bit, a bit. But, but I did give us until the end of the year. Really? <sighs> okay. Let's set the Wayback Machine to 2019 and look at that again, all right? So, this, this thing is going to take off... Uh, fly to 65,000 feet, about 20 kilometers, and come back and land um, in, in about uh, one to two months. <laughs> oh, that just makes me crack up every time I see it. <laughs> All right, so... How many months did it actually take? Uh, six months? Elon? 18 months. Right. So, now I'm gonna go and tell everybody that this is the worst case of Elon time in human history, and you're gonna go back to play with your rockets. All right? But Gwen, 
Elon? She never lets me have any fun. Thank you, thank you, no, no, please stop, please stop, really, really, thank you, thank you so much. So, so, as I was about to say, yesterday's accomplishment was simply astonishing. I mean, really something special. Virgin Orbit is going on to bigger and better... <coughs> Who the bloody hell could be ringing me up right now? I, I, I won't be a moment, I won't be a moment. Hello? I know it was you. Yeah, I saw you. I saw you on the news. You said, Jeff who? Jeff who? What? Is this becoming something popular amongst every other billionaire around? Is Elon like your your, your idol or something like that? Jeff who? Like that was real original. Ha ha ha. <sighs> Look, old boy, that was just a bit of a lark, all right? Nothing serious, and, and besides, it's certainly not the most risky thing that I've ever done. So, so why did you call me anyway? Oh, I don't know. Maybe to let you know that I'm going to space before you are, even though you've been working on it forever. <laughs> How about that? Oh, that may be so, old boy, but um, you're not going to do it with the same kind of style. Fiona, why don't you and your partner come out here for a moment? See, see, that's what style is all about there, Jeff. I, I know you don't have much of an understanding of that. Oh, and by the way, going to space, I rather think that that also means going to orbit. I think that Elon had something to say about that as well. Don't say it. Don't say it. You better not say it. Oh, don't worry, Jeff. I rather think I've made my point about getting things up to orbit. But in the meantime, I'm afraid I've got other things to be doing. No, no, you're not getting away with this. Not yet. And guess what, little man? What, you call yourself a billionaire with, what, six billion dollars? I've got over a hundred, boy. What do you gotta say to that? Well, first of all, I can make my hair do this. Oh, oh, hair, I shouldn't have brought that up. Um, oh, well, aside from that, if I had spent the same sort of money that you had on my company, I would have bankrupted myself years ago, and I would have had to go back to Blackheath and go on the dole. And yet, I've gotten to orbit. Twice. And what have you done exactly, Jeff? What was that, Richard? I couldn't hear you over the sound of my private rocket that I'm taking along with a customer who paid $28 million for the privilege democratization of space, my ass. <laughs> well, have fun on that suborbital bungee jump. I'm going kite surfing with a few of my, um, mates. Cheerio! What? Where'd you go? Hello? Hello? Arrogant English mother. And liftoff, liftoff of the Proton rocket, one of the most reliable rockets in Russian history. Isn't this a wonderful sight, Joe? Uh, Sergey, is it supposed to be doing that? Don't worry, this is Russian technology, nothing to worry about. Uh, Sergey, 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 you should hit the flight termination system now! We do not believe in flight termination charges, it is failure! Oh my god! What are you worrying about, you wussy American? This is Kazakhstan. They are used to running away. We used to drop nuclear weapons here. Oh, you might want to look out for the shockwave. Shockwave? What shockwave? <laughs> We will be destroying this with an M4 cluster bomb, a incendiary warhead, and then finally, for good measure, some Chernobyl thermonuclear toxic shit. Wow! Wish us the best of luck.
impressive. Impressive. I take a lot of this back, man. I take a lot of this back. <laughs> How did it survive that? Now it's time. Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Emergency. Dad, wait, don't wait. Well, that blew the shit out of it. Look out for the toxic shit. The Chernobyl toxic shit. Ah! I wasn't kidding. I must say that in terms of resilience, well, not bad. Not bad at all. So, one out of three. They didn't do too bad. It was the Chernobyl toxic shit that got it in the end.